ディズニー・ファインディング・ニーモーディズニー・ファインディング・ニーモーマーリン・ウォーザー・クラウン・フィッシュ But that didn't mean he had to find life funny All he did was worry about his little son ニーモー Who had one weak fin. Marlin had lost the rest of his family to a big bird, big bad barracuda when Nemo was just an egg. He was determined that no harm would ever befall his only son. Nemo was a fish full of fun who was looking forward to starting school and making friends. But Marlin Didn't even like him going outside their home. What's the one thing we have to remember about the ocean? he asked little Nemo sternly. It's not safe, Nemo sighed. On the first day of school, all the kids went on an outing to the edge of the reef. Nemo had made some new friends and, together, they sneaked off, daring each other. To swim out into the open sea. Nemo was nervous and didn't venture very far, but it was way too far for Marlin, who was hovering nearby. You think you can do these things, but you just can't, Nemo, he yelled, rushing over. Definitely, Nemo decided to prove him wrong. While his dad was distracted, the little fish. Swam out towards a boat anchored overhead. Brave Nemo had made it all the way to the boat when disaster struck. A diver grabbed him. Daddy, help me! yelled Nemo as he was scooped up in the net. Coming, Nemo! cried a distraught Marlin. There is nothing he wouldn't. To save his precious son. But another diver saw him and took a photo. Blinded by the flash for precious seconds, Marlin couldn't catch up with the disappearing divers. The boat took off so fast that a diver's mask fell overboard. A beautiful regal tongue fish called Dodori offered to help Marlin. Find Nemo, but unfortunately, she had a short term memory problem. I forget things almost instantly, she explained, and promptly forgot who Marlin was. Er, can, can I help you? she asked. Marlin sighed. He turned to head off and came face to face with a shark. The shark was called Bruce. He was Trying to turn vegetarian. The big bruiser wanted the fish to meet his like minded buddies so they could prove their motto Fish are friends, not the food. Dory, as enthusiastic as she was forgot to fall, thought the whole thing was a great idea. Marlene, who was totally terrified, did not. The self help shanks held. The meetings in a wrecked submarine. The meeting began. It has been three weeks since my last fish, Bruce, told his friend proudly. Always eager, Dolly joined. I don't think I've ever eaten a fish, she said. Then Marlin spotted the diver's mask. It was the same mask worn by the diver who had taken Nemo. Dory wanted to show it to the sharks, but Marlin didn't. As the two scuffled over the mask, Dory bumped her nose. It bled a little, and Bruce got a craving for a fish dinner. Just a bite, begged Bruce. His friends tried to stop him eating up Marlin and Dory, but Bruce was determined. A scary skirmish ensued before the plunky fish were able to get away with the mask in two. But disaster struck 
when Dory accidentally dropped the mask into a deep ocean trench. When they swam down after it, the two friends discovered a scary angel fish just waiting to pounce. Its glowing antenna was the only light this far down in the ocean. While Marlin fought the fish, the light revealed an address on the diver's mask. Luckily, Dory remembered she could understand human. 42 Wallave, Way, Sydney, Australia, she read, using the mask to trap the anglerfish against the rock. Marlene and Dory set off for Sydney with new hope of finding Nemo. Meanwhile, Nemo found himself the latest catch in the dentist fish tank in Sydney, where he met Bubbles, Peach, Jackies, Bloat, Deb, Gargoyle, and their tough guy leader Gil. Poor Nemo soon discovered how small the tank was. He could hardly swim any distance without hitting the sides. Even worse was to come. Nemo heard he was to, to be given to the dentist's niece, a ghastly girl named Dala. The tank fish was shocked. She's a fish killer, whispered Peach. Later that night, the friends in the tank asked Nemo to join their gang. If, Blood whispered, you are able to swim through the ring of fire. It sounded scary, but really it was just a circle of bubbles. Nemo bravely made it through and into the gang's herd. We are gonna help him escape, the girl told his fishy friends. Back in the ocean, Molly and Dory were in trouble too. They had swum into jellyfish forest and got stung. Luckily, they escaped and some sea turtles gave them a ride. One of the little turtles did lots of daring tricks, but his father, Crush, didn't mind. He trusted his children to know their limits. How do you know they're ready? asked Molly. When they know, you don't know, Crash replied. As Molly got closer to Sydney, tales of his adventures were spreading far and wide. Nigel, a friendly pelican who knew the Tanku Yang, eventually heard the stories and rushed to tell Nemo the incredible news. You are dead, being fighting the entire ocean, looking for you, he squeaked in excitement. Nemo was amazed. He loved his dad, but had always thought him a bit of scaredy fish. The idea that he was battling his way to Sydney filled the little fish with pride and a new hope of returning to his ocean home. The tank gag had tried and failed to escape before, but this time Nemo was determined. Bravery, he managed to jam the tank's cleaning filter with a pedal, pebble. The water inside the tank became green and filthy. Surely, this would mean that the dentist would have to take out the fish to clean the tank. In turn, this would mean he would have to put them in little plastic bags. Then maybe, somehow, they might just be able to make their escape. Back in the ocean, Molly and Dory said goodbye to the turtles, but were soon in trouble again with a whale. The gigantic creature scooped them into his massive mouth. I have to get out. I have to find my son. Mary wailed. I promised I'd never let anything happen to him. You can't never let anything happen to him, Dory argued. Then nothing would ever happen to him. That's not much fun. Luckily, the whale was only giving the two brave fish a lift. Soon, they were squirted out of his bow blowhole, right into Sydney Harbour. 
the two friends sought to throw the boat that had taken Nemo, almost being eaten by Gerald the pelican. Luckily, Nigel found them just as Gerald spat them out onto the dock. Hop inside my mouth if you want to live, he whispered to Marlene and Dory. The wary fish realized they could either become lunch for a seagull or trust the big pelican. Scooping them up, Nigel flew over towards the dentist's surgery. Inside, the tank gang had head trouble. The dentist had cleaned their water with a fancy new filter while they were still in the tank. The escape plan was ruined. What do we do when the little bra gets here? Worried bloat. I'm thinking, said Gil. A little put out that his brilliant plan hadn't worked, but it was too late. Despite their efforts to save Nemo, Nemo was lifted out of the tank and plopped into a bag. Dala had arrived. Suddenly, Nigel stumbled through the window with Marlin and Dory. The dentist quickly shooed him away, but dropped Nemo as he did so. The bag burst open. I get a fish, squealed Dollar as she reached out to grab him. But true friends are there for you, whatever the risk is. Using all his strength, Gail leapt from the tank and distracted Dollar, making her scream. Tell your dad I said hi, Gail yelled as he managed to catapult. The startled Nemo right down the sink. Back in the tank, he reassured his friends. Don't worry, all drains led to the ocean. Nigel flew back to the harbor and dropped a desolate Marley and Dory back in the water. Marley thought he had lost Nemo for good and swam off to be alone. But then Nemo found Dory. She couldn't believe her eyes when she realized who the little orange clownfish was. Together, they swam after Marlin as far as the Nemo's little fin would let them. There was a joyful reunion, and Marlin realized how strong his son was and how overprotective he had been. Now, he and Nemo both knew that. Life was an adventure to be lived to the full together and with the help of good friends. Meanwhile, the Tang Yang were having an adventure of their own. They'd finally made their escape, and now they just had to get out of the bags.